Hello again. So let's see now how we can configure the master and slave ports. And I connect to uh, the lab here. Then I have to go to interfaces here. Ethernet 1, I do nothing with it. I keep it. It's a master port. Now Ethernet 2, I uh, get inside of it and I say master port of Ethernet 2 is Ethernet 1. You can see here uh, you have uh, the S means slave. Okay. And now R is running here. Now Ethernet 3, I want also to be Ethernet 1, the master port for it. And the same for Ethernet 4. Okay, so these are the steps that uh, they ask us to do on number 2. Now, check if you have internet, if you plug your cable into Ethernet 2, 3 and 4. All right. Um, now my computer is connected to Ethernet 2. Let me go here and to the adapter and my Ethernet, uh, uh, my local network is off here. So what I have to do is I let me turn off my wireless. Okay, I lose connectivity to the router, that's normal. And let me enable my wired network to my network interface card. Let me see if I'm getting an IP automatically here now. So I put it automatic IP. And let's wait a little bit. And here we go. If I want to check if I have internet or not, let me first go to CMD. Let's say IP config. And you can see I have received an IP from 192.168.2.9. Remember, Ethernet 1 is having 192.168.2.6. That means that it is coming from the ISP directly to me. If I make now ping to google.com. Here we go. We have internet. We go again now to Winbox. You see, this is actually the router that I'm working on, Mycotic. And then you can see here that if I go to IP addresses, Ethernet 2, Ethernet 1 actually, it received an IP address automatically from the ISP, which is 2.6. And because Ethernet 1 is the master of Ethernet 2, then there were a communication between the DHCP server of the ISP and my PC. And then I received 2.9. Yeah, 2.9 over here. Okay, so there is absolutely no problem at all. And if you look here inside, say, to the interfaces here, you can see Ethernet 2 is now connected and it's passing traffic. I will do also on, on uh, Ethernet 3, one more test. I will unplug my cable from Ethernet 2 and I put it on Ethernet 3. You can see here now I'm now, I have just plugged into Ethernet 3. Try again now to see what IP did I receive. IP config is still the same. And uh, the, if I do ping, I also have internet. Same applies if I do on Ethernet 4. But now let me bring it back to Ethernet 2. Okay, so now I'm inter on Ethernet 2 and no problem at all. So uh, this step is done correctly. Now what we need to do is to go to and remove the NAT and the DHCP configuration from our router. Remember here we said because we are going to make a bridge between the wired and the wireless, then we don't need anymore the DHCP and the NAT. Let me go again to, to the router here. And then from here, I have to go to the DHCP server. And then I will say goodbye. I don't want you anymore. And for the network also, I say goodbye. If we had the lease here, I would take it off. Okay, so this is done. What I need also to do for on the DHCP is I can go to IP pool. And then also, this is the pool that we have created before. And also take it them out. So this is DHCP is deleted. This has been deleted. Now for the NAT, I go to IP and to firewall NAT. I click on it <clears throat> and then I delete it. So these are the steps that I need to do to delete my DHCP and my NAT from the router. If you have a, uh, a router which 
not which is not uh, configured previously to be a wireless access point like uh, to have NAT, DHCP and so forth then you don't need to go through these steps these steps are only to take out what we have done in the previous lab and then for the bridge to be working for us now we have also to remove the IP from the WLAN 1 we go to IP address WLAN 1 and then I remove the IP why do I need to remove the IP? Because if we go back to here, we said that uh, we are going to make a bridge port now, which is going to be representing both networks, the wired and the wireless network. And then on this port, I will, I will receive an IP automatically. Now, I create an interface bridge. I will go here and then I say bridge and then plus, and that's uh, my uh, interface bridge has been created. So this step is also done. Then we need to put Ethernet1 and WLAN1 inside this bridge. So I go here, I will put Ethernet1 in bridge 1, that's fine. Ethernet1 here represent Ethernet2, 3 and 4 also. So it's like I'm putting now the four interfaces inside this bridge. And then also I want to put the WLAN1 in this bridge and OK. And that's how you can put both interfaces inside this bridge. And then what we need to do now is Ethernet 1 is the one now receiving an IP from the ISP. As Ethernet 1 has been inside now the bridge, then the bridge should now receive the IP from the ISP and not Ethernet 1. For this, I have to go to IP DHCP client. And here I have to change and say, well, I want this IP coming from the DHCP server of the ISP to be on bridge 1. And then I say, OK. OK, so this is also done. And then we have to check if we have connectivity uh, on the both wired and wireless network. All right, so let's do some tests now. First, let's check if we have, uh, by, by cable, of course, we have Internet now, because I'm now on Ethernet 2 plugged in. So if I do ping google.com, that's no problem at all. Okay, uh, what we need to check now if we have internet on the wireless. I enabled my wireless. Let me disable my local area network here. Okay, now it's connected to lab test 2. Okay, so I'm now connected to the wireless as you can see, only on the wireless. Let me check again and if I do ping google.com. I have a reply. Of course, it's uh, IP version 6. Uh, but if I say ping 8.8.8.8, .8 I have also a reply. And if I go to browsing here, it's also working very well. Now, the last thing I have to check is what is the IP I received to my wireless. So if I say IP config, so you can see the wireless LAN it received an IP of 192.2.11. Remember, this subnet is from, you can see here, is coming from the ISP because this is the router 2.6. So if we go now to the graph here, we can say that, okay, the internet has provided 192.2.6 to the router, which is now on the, on the bridge. And then it sent also via the bridge on the same range, which is 2.6. 11 right to that yeah to that 11 that is really the ip address that it is received on the laptop so like this the router is acting as a bridge transparent bridge and then we don't need anymore to make a dhcp and nat and uh, whatever okay so you can see that both the wired and the wireless network are receiving from the same IP, uh, subnet ip so this is really the lab that i wanted to show you i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you in the upcoming lecture